Well, as we're continuing on in our series, we are actually doing uh, two of the I am statements tonight. Um, we are starting off with, uh, it's gonna be, we're going to be reading John chapter 10, verses 9 through 14. If you'd like to stand with me. In verse 9, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and to kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and carries nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. And God bless the reading of his words. You may be seated. See, the story actually starts in chapter 10, verse 1. And it starts talking, uh, you know, Christ is talking to disciples. And he starts talking about a thief will not be the one that enters through the main gate, that a thief will actually go over the wall. And the thing is, is there, we, the disciples didn't really understand what was being talked about in the first section. So he kind of goes back and revisits again immediately. But see, I want to give us an illustration of what we're dealing with. See, back in that time, there were two ways that a shepherd kept his, his sheep. Okay, the first way is what they called a communal pen. And what would happen is this was a pen that was pretty high walls. People couldn't, it was very difficult for someone to go over and then to steal sheep and get out. But everyone in the evening in the community would come and put their sheep. Now, I am not at all familiar with sheeping, shepherding or whatever you want to call it, okay? Sheep herding or whatever you want to call it. I know, sheeping, you like that? But, uh, <laughs> but you know, so the, these guys would come in, and you can't tell, when you get all the sheep together, it's very difficult to tell them apart. But a community would come in, they'd take their sheep in there at night, and there would be a watchman or a porter or whatever, they, you know, a new t the NIV says one in the Old Testament, or the uh, King James calls it a porter, a watchman, different words. But either way, it's somebody who tended to the sheep at night. Their goal was to kind of keep an eye on things. But see, the problem was that was a hired hand. That was somebody who honestly wasn't very high in status. Matter of fact, usually was the youngest child of the group um, of a family who was in charge of watching them. As a matter of fact, if you remember, David was actually a shepherd. You know, he was out with the sheep, but he was one of the younger sons. But it was usually someone of not very high status. Now, of course, the illustration that Christ gives here says, Now the hired hand, when the wolves come, takes off. He's like, I'm out. And he leaves the sheep to be dealt with. Now, that's one way, the communal uh, sheep pen there. But the other way was if they're out on the hillsides or out in the uh, wooded area for the, the pasture. And see, what they would do is they would set up to where it had three sides of the sheep protected. To where the only way in and out was literally through a, a small area. You know, it might be a small, it, it's not a gate, but it's it kind of a, a bottleneck, I guess is what you would call it. A place where all the sheep had to go through. And for anything to get in, it had to go through there too. Now the shepherd would actually lay down by that area, becoming as a door into the pen, so that if anything were to come, it would, of course, wake him or make him aware of the situation. So those are the two ways that they used to take care of the sheep in the evening hours. But here was Christ talking about the story, and he said, you know, I am the door. Okay, we get right off the top, and it says, I am the gate, I am the door. You know, please understand, King James becomes one way, NIV, New American Standard. One is a gate, one is a door. It all kind of is the same idea here. But what he's talking about, he immediately starts and says, listen, I am the gate. Now, the illustration I gave that when they, the shepherds are out in the fields and the shepherd lays down across the entranceway where the sheep come and go, that's kind of the illustration that Christ is saying. is like, listen, guys, you understand this part. You didn't understand what I was talking about over here, but I'm pretty sure you got a good understanding about this. I am the gate. In other words, nothing gets through without me. See, Christ is actually, you know, when we look at things in Scripture, the gate or the door, the doors are metaphors, you know, we, uh, you know, those that stand at the door and I knock, things that enter into our lives, we hear how Christ used the door as that illustration. Um, 
opportunities, the door opens, right? We, we hear these illustrations all the time. And this, in a way, is the same idea, that Christ is the only door to salvation. Okay, and he's trying to say this to the people that if you come through me, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. Now, we know at this point that Christ is now teaching to the Jewish people this new concept. It's all new to them. Now, we're reading a scripture that's been around for a long time. We've all been real familiar with it, and we know the story. But we have to remember that he's teaching a group of people that this whole new thing is crazy to them. See, because how could a man be the entranceway to salvation? And so the disciples were a little bit confused about this thing. So they had to teach it in such a way that, you know what, they might grab hold of it. And so as he began to teach, he says that through me, through Christ, is the only way of salvation. Now, later on, the disciples will get the aha moment. Now, of course, we know at this point they're still thinking God's going, you know, Christ is going to rise up into some leadership power on earth and reign over the earth, but we know the story. But he's trying to teach them in a way of almost introducing. Now, remember, I am was a declaration, was the name that God gave to Moses to declare to Egypt. Remember that whole story, I am. Tell him the I am of the I am sent you. I am sent you. Okay? So remember that word, that statement means something. So now what he is doing is proclaiming his, his, right, his right place. He is God in man form through Christ Jesus. And through him, only through him, can anyone come to the Father. Now, Here's the interesting part. We are the sheep. Now, sheep aren't too smart sometimes. It's okay. We're all sheep here. <laughs> That's a preacher's way of getting away with something there, just so you know. <laughs> but we're all sheep. We all are, you know, if you look at it, when God's talking about sheep, he's talking about us. He's saying, listen, we are the sheep. We have come through the gate through Christ Jesus, right? We have come to the great. Now, as a matter of fact, back in the early part of chapter 10, he begins to talk about there's other sheep out there that I don't have yet, but I need to go get them. Now, that's kind of an interesting little point. Now, I like, like I said, there's sometimes so much to read, and I try to present to you as much as I can. But see, what he was talking about at this point was the Gentile people. See, the sheep at that time were the Jewish people. They were the good, clean people. Remember the sacrifice of the lamb? Lamb represented the sins of the Jewish, of the Israel, right? And so now in chapter 10, earlier on, he makes a statement, says, there, for there are other sheep. And it kind of, I'm pretty sure the disciples were confused there. But isn't it great that the other sheep are thought about? See, that would have been without hope for us if he had said, you know what, I have my flock and that's all I need. But he said, there's others. And he says, I need to go and get them. And so, as a matter of fact, he begins to say, I'm even going to lay my life down for them. Hmm. Kind of sounds like a salvation story to me. Just a thought. But here he was talking to disciples about the fact that he is the gate and he is the only way through him. Now, I like to say, in a way, if you want to call it a door, he's kind of a special door, okay? A door, whether an opportunity, what we talked about him being unique. And you know what? He's actually an intimate door because of the fact that Christ wants a personal relationship with us. As a matter of fact, it talks about that when the shepherd, now we talk about the communal one, the communal gate, okay? The, the, the little pen right there. What happens in the morning when the shepherd goes out? The shepherd goes to the gate and looks at the porter. The porter lets him in. Okay? And the shepherd says, come on, sheep, let's go. And guess what happens? Those crazy old sheep, they know the voice of their shepherd. And they begin to just sift through. I'm sure they were probably intermingled all throughout the group there. And they begin to shift through and, and they, they begin to come out one by one. And they begin to follow the shepherd. 
Now, no other sheep that belongs to anyone else will move. They stay. As a matter of fact, they run away from that shepherd because they don't know him. Hmm. It's a good preaching point right here, huh? I think I might go on on that a little bit. But they begin to follow him because they know his voice. The other ones run away from him. Now, it talks about this thing called a thief who comes in and, and tries to steal, destroy. You know that's actually not the shepherd, right? We know that's the enemy. The enemy's coming into the pen and attempts to steal the sheep. As a matter of fact, they say, now like I said, I've never gone out and wrestled down any sheep. I have no clue. The closest thing I've ever went to wrestle is a pig for some other reason. But, <laughs> imagery. <laughs> But they say when somebody goes in and tries to steal a sheep, it's very difficult because it runs, constantly trying to keep away, fighting and screaming, trying to get away from the enemy. But it also says when the shepherd comes, the sheep recognizes that voice. They know the voice of the shepherd. They begin, once they hear it, they begin seeking out that voice. Where is it coming? Oh, it's coming from, let me go. I'm going to go find it. And once they go out with the shepherd, as the shepherd is very clear, Christ is very clear here. He says, in me they have a protection. They have safety. And Matthew says, I am the good door who enters through me when I, he will come and go in and out and find pasture. What's the Psalms 20 though? As I walk through the valley of death, fear no evil, I rod and I staff and comfort me. He makes me to lean, lay down in green pasture. Christ wants us to have a peace. But see, here's the thing. There's two parts to this. First, if we don't know the voice of our shepherd. Because Christ goes on and says, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and they know me. Now, Shepherd, now I, I've done some study just trying to learn a little bit more about what it means to be a shepherd. And of course, you always see him walking around with a shepherd's hook. And, you know, for Christmas cantatas, we always had a little guy walking around, you know, those type of things. You know, they're used to, that shepherd hook is actually kind of a brutal tool. They, they use it for two different purposes. One, to grab hold of that sheep and get them over in line. Secondly, to beat off the wolves when they come. But see, there's another little interesting tidbit that I thought very... You ever seen a story where, you know, we got the picture of Jesus with the sheep around his neck or the shepherd with the sheep wrapped around his neck? You want to know what the shepherd does to the sheep to train them? See, when the, shepherd get, when, the, when the sheep get disobedient, they wander off too many times. He goes out and gets them and brings them back. He goes out and gets them again to bring them back. He goes out and gets them. Now, wait a minute, we're, we're getting a problem here. How many times are we going to keep doing this? So the shepherd does something. He dislocates the hip of the sheep. He puts them around his shoulder and carries them. Well, that sounds like animal cruelty, doesn't it? But he does it for a reason. Because that shepherd, now, you know, remember, that shepherd loves the sheep. He doesn't want them wandering out to die. Because sheep can't protect themselves. So he dislocates it. And now he's carrying the sheep with him everywhere. When it comes time to eat, he feeds the sheep. When he's walking, he carries the sheep. That sheep cannot exist or continue to exist without the help of the shepherd. Now after a little bit of time, the, the, the injury is reset. The sheep is allowed to go back out. And through that time... A relationship established. That sheep now knows that he can't live without the shepherd. Now, what all does this mean? Sometimes we get out of line. We begin to wander off too many times. And sometimes, sometimes I think God loves us enough that he teaches us a lesson. We don't like to talk about that part. That is, that's not the feel-good side of the story. But the reality is that sometimes God says, you know what? You need to learn 
that trust in him. Now, I'm going to throw, I mean, an illustration out here about, you know, we talk about giving. We talk about how, how do we ever learn to tithe? Okay, and I know this is just an illustration. Please, it's not a tithing sermon. Don't turn off right now. But sometimes we try God by saying, okay, Lord, I, I don't understand how it's going to work, but I'm going to give to you anyways. And he blesses us. We give to him again, and he blesses us. Now, I, I was learning to tithe early on, and this is where I kind of get my theology because it worked for me. But, well, you know, there for a while I was learning to tithe, and one day I needed a set of tires, and I was like, ah, you know, I'm going to, you know, I'm just going to, yeah, anyways, you know what I was going to do. <laughs> Don't act like I'm the only one that ever did that. <laughs> but I put my tithe money somewhere else. Man, I tell you what, I was so miserable. But see, you know what else is kind of funny? I incurred more bills that week. For some reason, I have no clue how it happened. I didn't even know I owed that much. Well, man, I didn't miss tithing again. Because it seemed like every time I did that, something else would happen. Well, that's just an illustration of how sometimes. First thing we've got to do is understand that salvation is only through Jesus Christ. Period. Now, the nice part of it, you know, we talk about that, and that's, that is the most important part. He is the saving door. He's the special door. He's our secure door. You know what? Nobody, nobody can take you out of the hand of God. Uh-oh, wait a minute, preacher. We're getting close to that eternal security thing working here. Nobody can take you from him. But you can turn away from him. And so, in a way, he is our secure door. Because if God is for us, then who can be against us? We know the scriptures, right? And so we ask that question. He's our secure door. But you know what else? And this is where I think the shepherd part comes in. He's our sanctifying door. This is where we really get to know our shepherd. The world is full of people wanting to dis Tract us. They're wanting to lead us astray. They're wanting to see things happen to us. You know, the world, here's a, let's throw this illustration back out there. If we are his children or his sheep, we know the voice of God. But the world, who is not his sheep, run from him. Just a thought. Now, all this is from a simple I am statement. But my question is, how well do you know the shepherd? How well do you know God? You know, I know this morning is, the sermon was a little bit rough. I, I, I know that. I can't apologize for it. I can simply say, understand, I do love you guys. I love you so much that I want you to have the full joy of the salvation that you have. And so, you know, I, I joke around, and I'm going to get in trouble. I, I'm going to, I can hear this one for weeks and months to come. I'm not the shepherd. You want to know what I am? I'm just that big, ugly sheepdog that keeps nipping on your heels and trying to get you in the right direction. I can hear that one coming for weeks on out. <laughs> but God is the good shepherd. Learn his voice. Know his voice. That way when he speaks, as the sheep seek out the shepherd. What about us? When the Holy Spirit speaks, are we listening? Are we seeking out the direction? Are we saying, yes, Lord, here am I? Do we really know the voice of our shepherd? Or have we gotten so filtered by so many other things in the world that we really don't know our shepherd's voice anymore? Or let me throw this idea out there. The other guy, the world, when he goes to calling, do we recognize his voice more than our shepherd's voice? Now, again, we're looking at two stories here. The world, the devil, the enemy. Not the people of the world, but the world itself. 
Which voice do you know better? Which one will you respond to when it calls out? Which one overpowered? Because the world's pretty loud out there. They say that a shepherd can walk into a pen and make a single sound. Not even a full sentence, not even a full word, just a simple sound. And the sheep know him so well that they respond to it. It's a challenge. When he says he's the gate, he is our protection. He's our salvation. You know what? He's our protector. He's also the one that disciplines us. He's also the one that helps us to mature in our walk. How much do you know him? How well do you know him? He's the good shepherd. He also talks about when 99 are in the pen and one gets away. He doesn't give up until he finds the other one. He talked about the other sheep to the, Gentile, to the disciples. He was talking about us. Aren't you glad he came out to get us? And so we've got to be understanding here that nowadays God has called us to take that news out. To tell the world out there about him. For wide is the way to destruction. For narrow is the gate of salvation. Let's pray. Father, we thank you once again for this, this evening, Lord. The weather's not very nice outside, but Lord, it's, it's okay. It's okay because we're inside with you. Lord, there's no greater joy than to be in the presence of God. And Lord, I pray that you would continue to bless each and every one of us. Lord, we want to just worship you with all that we are. We want to praise you, Lord, with all that we are. Lord, we want to learn your voice so intimately, so clearly, that, Lord, when you even begin to speak, we know it's you. Allow us to put off the distractions of the world, the temptations of the world. Lord, let us not be drawn to a false shepherd. Lord, we want to serve and live with the good shepherd. Now, Lord, as we go our separate ways, I do ask you to keep us safe, give us traveling mercies heading home. And Lord, help us this week to draw closer to you in some way. For we ask all this in Christ's precious name. Amen.